Hey everybody, so it was Pi Day a few days ago, and in light of that I thought it would be good to do a short presentation on the number Pi. So what is Pi anyway? Well, you may recall a geometrical definition of Pi from elementary school or middle school, which says that Pi is the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. If we diagram this, we have a circle with circumference C and diameter D, and Pi is just the number C over D. So this definition is cool, and it seems simple and straightforward at first glance, but it actually raises some complicated questions. First of all, how do we actually measure the circumference of a circle? We have some idea how to measure the length of a straight line, but it's not immediately obvious how to measure the length of a curve like a circle. Secondly, how do we know that this ratio is the same for all circles? For example, how do I know that it's the same for a tiny circle as for a really big circle? In order for this definition to make sense, we need to know that the ratio is always the same. Finally, who really wants to deal with circles anyway? I mean, pi pops up all over the place in mathematics, in contexts not necessarily directly tied to circles. So why do we want to have our definition so intimately tied to the geometry of a circle? Similar problems arise if we try to define pi as the ratio of a circle's area to the square of its radius, which is another definition you might have seen. In light of these difficulties, we might think about trying to define pi in terms of its familiar decimal expansion, 3.141592, so on and so forth. However, this doesn't work as a definition. Pi is irrational, which means it can't be expressed as the ratio of two integers, and it has an infinite non-repeating decimal expansion. So no matter how many digits of pi we specify, we're never going to uniquely define pi, because we can only specify finitely many digits. Instead, we can get to pi another way, starting with the complex exponential function. For a complex number z, this function computes an infinite series, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of z to the n over n factorial. This is not an arbitrary starting point, because this is actually one of the most important functions in mathematics. For real numbers x, we can define another function, cosine of x, in terms of the complex exponential function. Here i is just the principal square root of minus 1. This is just the familiar cosine function from trigonometry. By looking at the infinite series, we can see that cosine of 0 is 1, which is positive, and cosine of 2 is negative. So by continuity, which can also be established by looking at the infinite series, there has to be a least positive number x0 with cosine of x0 equal to 0. Since this is just the familiar cosine function, we know that that number has to be pi over 2. So we can define pi to just be 2 times this number. This leads us to an analytic definition of pi. Pi is just twice the smallest positive root of the real cosine function. We can derive everything that we need from this starting point, including the geometrical characterizations of pi. As a bonus, this approach also quickly leads us to Euler's formula e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x, and the famous identity, e to the i pi plus 1 is equal to 0, which relates five of the most important numbers in mathematics. So I hope you enjoyed this brief talk and it may have given you a different perspective on the number pi. If you'd like to read more about the ideas presented here, check out these references. Thanks for watching.